Tracy, maybe you could tell uh maybe you could tell a little bit about yourself. Sure. Go and uh do you need co-host capability or you have it? Okay. I yeah, and, and I guess as long as if you want me to start the recording at any time, whatever you prefer, uh, I guess right? Amy has it. <laughs> right. Okay. Because I see live. Oh, it's recording. Okay, great. So hey. hi, our, our small, lovely group. Um, it's nice that we're small because we can really who knows where we'll go. I'll extend my lesson plan because we'll have more time together in that hour. Presley, that might be your mic. I'm not sure. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Cool biz. Okay, thanks. So I teach theater at Washtenaw and um, we have acting classes, improv classes, theater appreciation classes. And something I think unique for this setting is I come from a family of scientists. That, so I have sort of, this shared brain, like, like I'm half scientist, sort of, kind of, and definitely half artist, maybe more. So, um, you know, my husband's a scientist, my father was an organic chemist. I grew up in a household where you ask questions and you consider, I remember my own dad, you know, me saying, oh, I'm going to boil some water. So I'm going to put hot water in the pot because it'll, the water will boil faster. And I remember him saying, you know, how do you know that? Are you sure? Are you sure that that's how it works? You know, so that's the household I grew up in, right? And um, but in a positive way, like encouraging asking questions. So oddly, I turned into a theater person. But I do believe to my core, you guys, that um, what we learn through studying the theater arts and other arts directly applies to our um, prowess and maybe capabilities as in the sciences, you know, or other fields, right? Because it's all about being open to ideas, questioning what we see in a good way, right? Um, accepting an idea before we poo poo it. And that's what we totally do in improv is we say yes to ideas and we play around with them, right? We don't just say, oh, that's dumb and stupid. I'm not even gonna consider that. We think, I don't care what you give me. If it's, I don't care if it just seems like it's from left field, we treat it like it's the best idea ever and we find out what we can do with it. Now it's playful and fun and goofy. Believe me, theater is just, and improv especially is goof ball, but it's actually like serious play. You know, we're having fun, but we're learning to say yes to each other we're learning to build each other up. We're learning to learn from other people's ideas. We're learning to say yes to whatever we're given and see what we can do. It To me, that sounds like science, actually. And I think it's if we can come into the scientific realm with, with, a, with a, a spark and an admiration for curiosity and creativity, we are leaps and bounds you know, ahead of ourselves if we to say no to ideas. So that's why I think this is kind of an important session. Um, but I'm gonna try not to get too heady with you all, but just emphasizing that the games we play today is a way to say, hey, let's not, let's fire the judge. And the judge I'm talking about is that judge that we can carry around in our heads that say, what I just said was really stupid or what I want to say is stupid. Or, or doesn't matter or won't contribute or, you know, all of that kind of thinking, that's what, when we work in our emotional intelligence and our creativity and like with improv, it's saying, sorry, judge, you're fired for the day, okay? And once we start getting used to that space that, wait a minute, maybe my idea did add to the conversation. Maybe I do have something unique that nobody else has to say. Maybe it really did matter. And we just play in that in improv. And so we're gonna play some fun games. Hopefully you'll find them fun. And, and I, believe me, I could talk about improv all day, but I can also do it all day because it's so much fun. Um, and there's one other thing I wanna emphasize before we just dive into a silly game um, is we all walk around with what I like to call a life library. And it's everything we've ever experienced, felt, thought, 
have been through, the people we know, the relationships we have, the, the, the you know, who, who our family is, what, what, what were we interested in, who our friends are, all of this makes up who we uniquely are. And what improv really encourages is you walk onto that stage or in that creative space, it doesn't even have to be on a stage, it can be right here, right? This is a stage, but it's different. We walk into that space with that entire library of who we are uniquely at our fingertips. And a lot of what we do is say, trust it, trust it, be yourself, be your wacky, creative, you know, slightly slanted self. Be that, that's what improv and theater craves. That's what creativity craves. That's what science craves actually. So um, let's play a fun game. If you guys don't mind turning on your, your um, cameras. I dared to turn mine on on a Saturday afternoon. So um, Lauren and, and uh, Paola, am I pronouncing your name correctly? I wanna make sure I, I do you justice there. I wanna make sure I, um, thank you, Susan. I just saw your text. Uh, Paola, are you there? Do you wanna participate? Yes. Um, oh. Yes, I will be. Um, my name is Paola. That's pa correct. Paola. Okay, thank you. And do you want to turn your mic on? Because, or uh, sorry, camera on? Because this game is kind of fun. It's called Show Me Your. And I'll explain. Yeah, um, I'll turn mine on. Just give me a look. Thank you. That's great. <laughs> That's fabulous. And Lauren, would you want to do the same? I think you're a participant, aren't you, Lauren? We'd love to have you, but I've, you know, Susan might play, Victor might even play, hey, we don't know. But the, this game is, you guys, it's called Show Me Your, and then we can say anything we want. Like I can say, show me your best friend, okay? But here's the, how the game works. You only can grab an object or maybe a, you know, non-human animal companion or maybe a human in the room but it has to be at arm's length right here it's like show me your best friend um i might pick up this mirror <laughs> and say this is my best friend right here now is this really my best friend that's not what matters it's not about being right or wrong and what's fun about this game is we're throwing right and wrong. Hi, hi, Paula. We're throwing right and wrong out the window because right and wrong keeps us in a small little box, okay? And then our creativity can be really stifled by that. Now, that doesn't mean in science there isn't right and wrong, okay? I get it. When you're studying biology or anatomy, you kind of want to get some of those things right. But in the creative process, when we're always fixated on right and wrong, we can close doors on ideas because letting ideas flow without immediately slamming them down can be so much fun and open up ideas we never would have thought of before. So I want you guys to play this game with me. So I'm gonna say, show me your best friend. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, this is a tough competition. Oh my gosh. Oh, a picture of a best friend, two best kitties, feline friends. I had trouble bird. picking him up. What, what's that, Foxy? I said I had trouble picking him up because he's extremely chunky. Oh, he's big. More to love. That's what I say. Yeah. Excellent. What's his name, Presley? Uh, his name is Frankie. He's one of four, uh, four or one of five cats that we have right now, two of which we're fostering. Fabulous! <laughs> you have five cats. Yeah, we had like twelve that we were fostering at one point. Oh, I love your household already. I want to come visit them. <laughs> That's yeah. fabulous. Um, Paula, who's your kitty? Her name is Splash. What is it? Aww. Splash. She's super Splash. sweet, super cute. She loves cuddling and attacking the camera. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, you know what she's saying? She's saying, I want you to pause. <laughs> no, she loves, she just likes looking at herself, I think. So she's, she's just insane. like, oh, that's funny. She probably thinks that this 
improv group is about her. Yeah, she does. <laughs> <laughs> So, oh, we have a new visitor. So the way we've, oh, and Susan, what was, who was your best friend? It was a paperweight. Yes, yes. Oh. And um, it keeps things under control on my desk. Nice, that's <laughs> always a best friend. We all need a friend <laughs> like that. So the way we play this game in class is whoever asks the question, um, then picks someone. And it's not really a favoritism thing. It's like, oh, I, how about Presley goes next? You know, um, Mr. Uh, what was his name? Stanley? Str Str what was his name, Presley? Huh? Who? His name again? His name is Frankie. Frankie. After Frankenstein, because he has a stubby tail, sadly. <laughs> Aww. Okay. So, Presley, why don't you go next? And um, Ajane, is that Ajane? Am I, help me out with your name. I just want to make sure I, I pronounce your name correctly. Uh, I, show me your favorite book. Show me your favorite book. Oh, oh this totally actually is my favorite book. Hmm. I, I can't reach mine. You can't? Then find something else that, that is your favorite book that you can reach, even if it's not a book. <laughs> just, I just had this in my hand. Oh, that's your favorite book. I love it. Who's your favorite? Animal Crossing is your favorite book. <laughs> I love it. What do you got there? Oh, Anna Karenia. Yes. Yes. Um, anyone else want to play? Turn the camera on. What? Oh, I think, I think Victor's got something going on here. It looks like Calculus is his favorite book. We can see all the favorites we can have in the room. Um, and there is no wrong, even Kermit the Frog or whomever that was, Presley. I wasn't uh, sure. I named him Ryan a long time ago, but he's actually an extremely chunky crocodile. <laughs> I love it. Crocodiles are dangerous. So, Paula, why don't you go next? And you can say, show me your... Mm, show me your favorite color. Ooh. Oh, we've got a lot of blues and greens and stripes, blues and greens and reds. Green. Ah, Lauren, green. We've got some luminous greens going on. I think that's green, Lauren, right? Hi, Ajane. Am I pronouncing your name correctly? Help me out. Did I do all right? It's Ajane. Uh, Ajane, great. Um, so Ajane, do you have a favorite color you want to show? I see yellow. I'm, I'm guessing yellow might be in the palette. Ajane, do you have a favorite color you want to show us? It's blue. Ah, do you have something that's blue nearby? I see, excellent. Okay, so we've got blue and, and Paula, let me see your pink ear. Nice, <laughs> nice. Okay, excellent. So, and now Paula, you can pick somebody who hasn't gone if you want, like Ajane or Lauren or you, you, it's kind of something we do in improv is we toss it around the squares. Um, Susan, if you want to go next. Oh, Susan, if you want to play. <laughs> oh, and you're muted, Susan, just real quick, yeah. <laughs> um, show me your favorite tool. I literally. Could that be oh, a stapler? What? Oh, yes. iPhone charger, pencil, pen, pen, pen. Ajane, do you have one? A favorite tool? Oh, um, I don't have one right now. <laughs> you can pick anything that's nearby and protect, because you know what's fun about this guy, and I'd love it if you did it, Ajane, 
if we, it's like saying, okay, this tennis ball is my favorite tool. Now, how I use this tennis ball as a tool, I can do whatever I want as a tool in this tennis ball. But hell, whoops, huh? heck, <laughs> I could use it as a hammer to pound soft nails into my sofa. I can do use this for anything. If that's my tool, it's my tool. Ajane, what did you find? A highlighter. That's a tool. That is a tool. Presley, what do you have? It's a weighted lap pad because I have autism, so it just helps me calm down. Also, oh. it's just really, really fun. Oh, I want one of those. I need that too to calm down. That's fabulous. All right. So um, who did who did the tool? Was it who asked for the tool? Oh, Susan. Susan, do you want to pick someone to go next? Um, how about Ajane? So it's a show me your, and it can be anything, Ajane, and it has to be within arm's reach. So ask us, show me your, it could be like we started with best friend, favorite tool, favorite book, um, favorite color, uh, your, you know, we could say your, you know. Okay, so ask us if you can, Ajane, for us oh, to yes. also do it. You know what I mean? Um, what's your favorite book? Oh, show me your favorite book. I got it. I got it. <laughs> oh, I funny. <laughs> That's not good English, Presley. <laughs> steam. Yes, and I love the A in steam. Who put the A in steam? Um, Paula, do you have one? Designing your life. Beautiful. I love that. Joyful, well-lived life. Ajane, do you have one? Love like sky. That is beautiful. What do we have, Victor? Oh, oh, is that the is that steam too? I forget. Faculty and staff. Oh, oh, I love that book. I was just reading it last night. I fell asleep while reading it but it was great. <laughs> All right, cool, you guys. That's a fun game I like to play. Show me your, and I just wanna remind you, there are no wrong answers. And something else we practice in improv that's so fun is I don't care. I just showed you a tea bag is my favorite book. And you know what? If I believe this is my favorite book, by golly, it is. It's like, I'm gonna own this like Hercules, and it is my favorite book and you can't tell me otherwise, right? And then we have fun with that reality. We get to stretch our realities. And then from there, we start to think of things and it's fun. Let's play another game, okay? This, now, let's see how we do. This is called Three Things, okay? And the way this game works is like, I could, I, I could ask somebody, okay, Okay, Presley, because I think Presley's ready for this game. I, I could ask Presley, Presley, give me three titles of, of films that should never be made. Uh... And you can have fun with these titles because you can just create whatever you want, right? And Presley's going to say one, and then we're all going to go one after. And he's, you're going to come up with three films that should never be made and have fun with it. Presley. If, it was, if it's already a thing, can I use that? You can use it and do whatever you want with it. And if you Avatar, think it should, go ahead. Yeah. The live action Avatar the Last Airbender movie. <laughs> one. One. <laughs> one. <laughs> A final Harry Potter movie. <laughs> <laughs> Two. Two. Uh, I don't know. Three. Three. Three things. And I like that film. The film, I don't know, should never <laughs> be made, according to Presley. <laughs> See, you guys, there's no wrong answer. We have fun with the ideas that we come up with 
and then we tumble out from there, right? So Presley, you go around the circle, pick someone and ask them to name three, but, but a whole new question, okay, Presley? Like it could be three new nail polish color, colors or paint colors or, you know, it could be anything you want. Pick who you're gonna ask. Uh, Susan, three favorite animals or just three animals. All right. Um, a horse. One. Um, a cat. Two. And a dog. Three. <laughs> three adorable animals. <laughs> Great. Two so Susan, yeah. you can ask someone. Paola. <laughs> um, what is the question? Oh yeah, you asked oh, oh, questions. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I should have been more clear. Sorry. I forgot. Okay, um, Paola, name three absolutely fabulous foods. Oof. Sushi. One. <laughs> um, pizza. Two. And. Spaghetti. Three, three things. <laughs> okay, Paula, you can ask someone to ask uh, three. And, and one idea is you can say like three, you know, foods that haven't been invented, invented yet or three new paint colors for your car. You know, something that can get people inventing new things if you want to, it's totally up to you. Hmm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I know. That, see, uh, but, but Paula, keep thinking, okay? You're fine. Okay, I got That's one. what's fun about this game is it challenges us to come up with a question. It also challenges us to have fun with the answers, right? So it's really, it's, it's putting us all in that space of this is new. I don't know what to say, but I'm going to be okay anyway. Okay. I'm going to be okay anyway. Because we um, support each other. Go for three. It. Okay, so Victor. Victor. Three different types of new monkeys. Three new types of monkeys, Victor. <laughs> um, flying monkey. One. One. Um, uh, uh, submarine monkey. <laughs> <laughs> and and um, I don't know uh, a speaking monkey. Three, <laughs> three <laughs> things exactly. Excellent, you guys. Excellent, Victor. Do you want to try asking somebody who hasn't gone? Maybe Ajane. I'm going to ask Ajane or. Your favorite cars. Three of your favorite car. uh, cars. Cars. Um, Lamborghini. One. One. Suburban. Two. <laughs> Two. And a Honda. <laughs> Three. Three things. You know what was fun about that, you guys? I just want to throw one thing at you about improv. It's something we call escalating. So when we do lists, we have fun creatively with like what Ajane just said, she started with Lamborghini. Now, most people would probably end with Lamborghini, right? Cause that's like super expensive hot rod, you know, sports car, right? But what was so fun is Ajane ended with Honda, right? You started big and then you, but what was at the top was something unexpected. And that's really fun Ajane. That's really fun. That's like saying, name three superpowers. And somebody could say, uh, uh, Hercules, Zeus, and my mother. <laughs> you know, right? So we that have is fun. a superpower, though. <laughs> yes, and that's actually the truth. So we have fun with lists, and we have fun playing around, thinking in that space, you know, on the fly. So 
Great, you guys. Lauren, do you want to try it before we move on to another game? I don't know if Lauren and no, no pressure, Lauren. Okay, great, Lauren. Um, if you want to turn your camera on, great, but you can play this without your camera. So, Ajene, if you could ask Lauren uh, to name three and maybe add something to it, like um, that, you know, like like three films that should never have been made or should never be made, or new paint colors, or you know, three kinds of plants that that don't exist. Or, you know, you can have fun with the unknown make make believe if you want. Um, what are three favorite films that you have? Lauren, three of your favorite films. Um, Harry Potter. One. Um, Manifest. Two. And Marvel, a Marvel movie. Three. Three things. Excellent, you guys. Any, before we move on, any thoughts about what we're doing? Like we're kind of breaking out of the the sort of the box that says there's there's right answers and wrong answers only and how we think about things and play with each other's creativity and say yes to each other's ideas you know one of any thoughts about that did that how did that feel was it fun it was fun was it fun good A excellent yeah. and you guys I have to be honest with you I teach theater and thank oh that's so nice to see the chat too so thank you you guys um you know, this is the big secret, okay? When I teach improv, we laugh for three hours. And I don't know anybody who gets to go and work with people in a room and laugh for three hours. Well, there's people out there, but I'm lucky enough to be one of them. So we have fun with each other and laughter brings ideas forward. And so I just want you to trust your ideas. Nobody else is gonna have them only you and you you can be a champion of your ideas because your ideas matter so okay now let's play a game we call doctor know-it-all and the way doctor know-it-all works is we can play it in lots of different ways but the way i think we're going to try is we're going to answer a question but we're gonna answer it one word at a time, okay? And I'm gonna assume everybody's playing because you're so graciously here. In the chat, I'm going to put the order. I'm gonna say, Tra I'll play with you. Tracy, I'm just putting it in the order of people I see. Victor, Susan, Presley, Paula, Ajane and Lauren, and then it would go back to Tracy. I put my name in twice, but then it would just keep rolling, okay? So does everybody see our order? Um, great, if you can just kind of always know, like Presley, you always go after Susan, right? Pola, you always go after Presley. Um, Ajane, you always go after Pola. Lauren, you always go after Ajene, and I got it in my head. Tracy, you always go after Lauren, right? Victor, you always go after me, et cetera, okay? Because that's a nice way to stay on track. Okay, so the way this works is we'll answer a question. I'll say one word, then Victor will say one word, then Susan will say one word, then Presley, one word, got it? Paula, only one, and it's really hard because you'll want to say more than one word. So that's why I'm emphasizing that so much. Here's the thing, we're gonna ask Dr. Know-It-All a question. And Dr. Know-It-All knows the answer to everything. He, she, they knows the answer to everything. You, I could say, Dr. Know-It-All, why do I always have holes in my socks? And Dr. Nodal will tell me straight up why. One word at a time. And it can be a run 
on sentence, meaning it can go on really long, but what you want to make sure is that it makes grammatical sense and only grammatical sense. <laughs> so don't worry if it's like, oh, you know, socks don't go up in outer space. Yes, they do. I funny. Exactly, Presley. <laughs> um, you funny, Presley. <laughs> Except, so socks absolutely can go up in outer space. But our, in order to have some sort of anchor to hold us down is we just want to make sure it makes grammatical sense to the best of our ability. If you think the question has been answered, you can say period to end it, okay? That can be your contribution. Or you can say a word and period if you want. It doesn't, you know. So um, got it? Let's give it a try and see how we do and then we'll do it another. So we can just learn the first time out. So don't worry about any mistakes that happen. We actually celebrate mistakes in improv because mistakes is where we learn. Because then we go, oh, that was funny because I didn't know I did it wrong, but I learned by doing it that way and we discovered something. So, all right, let's give this a try. Who wants to ask Dr. Know-it-all a question? A pressing, pressing, important question like, all right, I'll tell you what, I wanna know why my socks all have holes in them, Dr. Know-it-all. I really am desperate for an answer, okay? Well, now it's Victor, so I started Victor, sorry. Well, socks. Say that again. Socks. Socks. Uh, are. <laughs> Warren. <laughs> Socks are worn Perfect. on your <laughs> feet. <laughs> Therefore, uh. Are <laughs> destroyed. <laughs> Period. <Perfect. laughs> Paula, did you say something after destroyed? I missed it if you did. Yes, I said period. Period, all right, excellent. So see what just happened? I've been wondering why my socks have holes in them and I never really realized that socks are worn on your feet and so therefore, therefore socks are destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel so much better knowing that, thank you, Dr. Know-it-all. I'm gonna, like the rest of my day, it's going to go so much better. Does anyone else have a question for Dr. Know-it-all? A pressing, pressing question. Yes, Ajane. Why are clouds white? Why are clouds white, Dr. Know-it-all? I'll start just because it keeps us in the same, you know, um, since we don't have a lot of time here. Um, okay. Clouds are... Fluffy because they are white <laughs> and are frothy. <laughs> uh, and that's good. That's exactly right. Have moisture. <laughs> Here it is. Okay, I mean, look, this sounds like science to me. Um, clouds are fluffy 
because they're light and frothy and have moisture. <laughs> and that will be on the exam. <laughs> Excellent, excellent. You guys, let's play some more because it's so much fun. But can you see we're building, we can't answer it ourselves because that's not the game, right? We only are in charge of one word at a time, right? So when we combine everyone's ideas together, we actually are building something together and we're accepting what the other person offers and taking it from there. And it's the act of that reinforcing each other, not thinking that we author everything ourselves and we don't take ideas from other people, that it, we can't in this game. We're sort of forced into this world of make-believe and building on each other's ideas. So can we play some more? Because I think we're getting good at it now. I think we understand it. So, and I want to offer to you, that let this baby, oh, Victor's got a kitty too. He wanted us to know that he also has a feline. He might not have five, right? But, but oh, three, okay, that's good, that's good. So um, let's try again. And I think I want you to trust that if the sentence needs to go on longer, let's let it go on longer and just see where that, what yarn we can spin. Do you know that expression, spinning a yarn? It's like spinning a tail. It's like making, MSUing it, making stuff up, right? But just keep a grammatical sense and don't worry about anything else. And support just, and you know what, Vic, uh, Presley, I was so proud of you because Presley kept getting conjunction words. And those are the small little words like and, and the, and if, you know? And sometimes we can think, oh, it's not good because it's just this simple word, but that's not it at all. We need those words. And Presley, that was such a great moment when you knew I'm gonna say and, you know? And that helps build the structure of what we're doing because everything we do and say doesn't have to be amazing. It's just contributing, we're contributing. So Presley, that was so cool. And others did that too. So, um, so that was really, really nice to see. All right, let's have another question for Dr. Know it all The doc, he, she, they know everything. Ajane, do you have a question for Dr. know it all Well, you, you know, clouds, you now know about clouds. Presley, do you have a question? Uh, no. You don't. That's a silly question. Yes. I... Why Tarzan lives in the jungle and do not have a beard? Wait, say that again. <laughs> Why Tarzan lives in the jungle and do not have a beard? So why what does live what, why does tarzan, tarzan live in the jungle and oh, not why him? does tarzan i didn't hear tarzan i'm so sorry thank you why does tarzan live in the jungle and doesn't have a beard and ajane we're going to get your question next okay um so wow i ooh, you're really i don't know dr know it all i hope we're not challenging you too much so um jungles don't have much hygiene <laughs> and now I'd have to know how to spell. Uh oh, <laughs> and good trees. <laughs> oh, sorry, I was laughing. <laughs> um, therefore, no hair <laughs> can <laughs> grow <laughs> on. <laughs> okay. 
Say that again, Lauren. A. Cheek. <laughs> Hair. Needs. Uh, <laughs> You're getting soap. hard ones, Paula. I don't know. <laughs> Did you say soap? Did you say soap? Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> good idea. Leaves. <laughs> and And you, Victor, you've got like a little bit more to go, Victor. So, because hair needs soap and leaves and... Razor. Razor? Eraser. Plus. Good answer. Monkeys. <laughs> Like to all you learn eat <laughs> pajamas. <laughs> Period. All right. <laughs> Let's see the wisdom of Dr. Know it all this time. Um, why does Tar Tarzan live in the jungle and doesn't have a beard? Dr. Know it all. Jungles don't have much hygiene <laughs> and trees, therefore, no hair can grow on a cheek because hair needs soap and leaves and razor. Plus, monkeys like to eat pajamas. Thank you, Dr. Know it all. That was fabulous. Let's give Dr. Know it all a hand. Um, let's play one more round. Ajane had a question and let's change the game just a tiny bit. This time let's each say two words and see how it changes things. It just gives you a little bit more flexibility. It might be harder, it might be easier, I don't know. So Aj, does everybody got that? We're gonna now do the same game. Let's keep the same order just because we got it. Um, two words at a time. Still want to try to make grammatical sense. And if you think it's been ended, if you think it's a sweet spot ending, you can say period or even exclamation point. You know. Okay, Ajane, what was your question? Because I saw your hand. So why, why do flowers change colors? Uh, Dr. Know it all. Why do flowers change colors? Flowers Words? Oh, yeah. Oh, I broke. See? <laughs> now, listen, here's the thing, though, you guys. I'm glad that happened to me because I'm the teacher, right? Teachers are supposed to know every, you know, know all the right answers. And no, no. We all make mistakes. And actually, well, something we say in improv is lower the stakes. Like, if you make a mistake, did the sky fall? Did anything break? I don't think anything broke. My husband's cooking lunch. Craig, did anything break when I made that mistake? <laughs> he said three eggs broke. So really though, actually when we make mistakes like that, we all support each other because we all know we can do it. Every one of us can do it, right? So I'm really actually glad I blew it. So, okay. Two words at a time. Dr. Nodal, why do flowers change colors? Flowers change. Colors because. They are happy. <laughs> Did I say three? <laughs> oh no, the sky's gonna fall. We're gonna break three more eggs. <laughs> okay, because they fill. Because they, did you say fill? Yeah, F-I-L-L. -L. Thank you. Whoops, sorry. 
<laughs> okay. Up with. Nice. Water and. <laughs> uh, rainbows and. <laughs> nice. Beautiful. And. Say that again, Lauren. Kool-Aid and. Oh, got it. <laughs> um, butternut squash. And. Whoops. Red. Wait, say, I'm sorry, say that again. Red. Help me out. I don't know why I can't hear it. And red. R E D. Oh, red. Okay, beautiful. Thank you. Sorry, Victor. Colors in their stems, right. which are strong and good. Whoops, strong. See, I'm spelling all kinds of mistakes, sorry. Wheat stems. They're stems which are strong and, say that again. Weak stems. Weak. Which are strong and weak stems. <laughs> um, together, make beautiful flowers. Nice. Great, you guys. So let's read that. That's fun. Um, why do flowers change colors, Dr. Know-it-all? Flowers change colors because they, I like that they are happy. <laughs> that was nice. Um, they are happy. They, that, because they fill up with water and rainbows and Kool-Aid <laughs> and butternut squash and red colors in their stems, which are strong and weak stems together make beautiful colors. Thank you, Dr. Know-It-All. <laughs> so you guys, um, I'm gonna, uh, just for a second, a half a second, I'm gonna put a couple documents in the chat, okay? That I want you to take with you. It's something that I worked on for you to kind of highlight some things you can share with, with you know, anyone you think that might um, enjoy it. One, ha one has colors on it, but I did another one that doesn't have colors. So it's easy. Um, for anyone to read. So these are the, both of these documents are the same, but, um, but, but they, you might be able to read them differently depending on your needs. So um, I, on what I tried to do was give you just some of the basic tenets or what we call, like, I don't like the word rules so much as best practices, the best practices of improv. And then I, talk a little bit about how improv can benefit us in the creative space and to build communities where we come to common ground and, and work, on, um, work on solving problems or raising questions and, and uh, together, that we build ideas together. And that last game we played, you guys, I, it, it exemplifies exactly what we're talking about. We got to play together. We didn't worry about being right or wrong. You know, we corrected grammatical stuff just to make it go smoothly, but it wasn't the end of the world, was it? Um, and yet the outcome, we never individually could ever, ever have come up with those answers. Now we could have come up with an answer that was different, but this is what we created together. And improv is so much fun because we come together and have fun practicing 
what we really need to do in our lives is build ideas with other people and and listen to other people and they listen to us and we and we consider people's ideas and and the sky's not going to fall if if an idea you know isn't the greatest thing since sliced bread because most ideas aren't right most ideas are just us trying stuff and if we give ourselves permission to just play around and try things we can get a lot further often do you, what do you guys think what do you think presley do you have any thoughts about it not really do you have friends and situations where you play like you have kind of goofy fun with someone yeah me and my friend at school who i'm going to this halloween party today we make a lot of a lot of jokes you do like we ended up having to be told to be quiet in class because we couldn't stop <laughs> so do you make each other laugh yes a lot i have a feeling you're pretty fun presley i have a feeling you're pretty fun and your your friend what's your friend's name his name is nolan Nolan. My grandson's name is Nolan. So is Nolan pretty fun? Yeah. And we're the exact same age. So it's just like easier. Do you feel like Nolan, like, does, does Nolan, do you guys laugh at the same things? Yeah. It's fun. You're really lucky to have a friend like that. That's really nice. Yeah, have fun at your party today. Thanks. Are you, dressing, are you dressing up? Yeah. What are you dressing up as? Um, I'm dressing up this, as this guy called Omega from Fortnite. Okay, okay, cool. It's really, really cool. Okay, that's so great. And he's oh. dressing up as a plague doctor. But it's an SE, it's a uh, monster from one of his favorite horror games. Ooh, okay, okay. That's touching on some real life stuff um pola what do you think do you have any thoughts or comments um i just wanted to say that those costumes seem really cool especially it doesn't seem really yeah. awesome it sounds like you can have yeah. a lot of fun yeah are you pola are you celebrating halloween in any way yes i am um i'm I'm actually hosting a little get together tonight with my friends. So it's going to be fun. Nice. Do you guys ever play games? Yeah, we play like card games and stuff like that. Those are fun. Cool. Ajane, how about you? What do you think about these games we played or um, what, how does it get you thinking? Uh, it was pretty fun. I liked it. I liked your contributions. It was, wait, what did you say? It was really, he, I love that you guys, something that we do in improv, it's that moment where I don't know what I'm going to say. And Ajane, when you said rainbows, do you remember when you said rainbows? It was, it's that moment where the first thing that comes to your mind, you guys, is usually what's laced in gold. That's what, how I like to think about it. Because it does come into our mind, but I think we get used to saying, oh no, I can't say that, or oh, that's not really gonna work. But I, it was fun, Ajane, to see you. There was just this little breath, and then you said it. You said rainbows, because I, I believe I could be wrong because I can't read your brain, your mind, but I think it was kind of the first thing that came to your mind. And that I really want you guys to trust that. I want you to trust that when you think of something, it's, it's important. You thought of it, no one else thought of it. And you're not like anyone else. So your contributions matter as much as anybody else's. And I love that moment of trusting when you said rainbows, mm -hmm. you know, it was just great. Mm -hmm. and, and I want us to um, think about that moment when you find yourself, could I really say that? And then you do, of course, supportive things. Not, we never 
mm-hmm. hurt anyone in improv. We always build people up. We don't build people down, right? Mm-hmm. So when you try that, see what happens mm-hmm. and how much fun it can be. Mm-hmm. Now, usually what you think of is all right. Um, Lauren, do you have any thoughts? I don't know if you're still there, Lauren, but just wondering if what you thought of the games or. Well, if you think of something, Lauren, speak up, okay? Because I'd love oh, to hear from she's you. She just said in chat. Oh, good. Oh, sorry, Lauren. I'm. I was looking at. Uh, it was fun. Good. I'm glad you had fun. Um, learning does not have to be miserable. <laughs> learning can be fun, and I hope you guys, if you ever make it to Washington, wherever you're, you're beautiful lives lead you. I hope you'll consider taking improv at Washtenaw. I have dual enrolled high schoolers. Um, we have WTMC students that are in high school. If you, if you get there, it, you know, take a theater class with me. I would love to have you. Um, we really have a lot of fun. I guarantee it. So it was great meeting you. You, have, you can email me. You, if you want to get those documents out of the chat, that can just be a supplement to what we did today. Oh, right? uh, you see thank that, you. Presley? Thank you so much, Tracy. You're thank welcome, you. Susan. Really, it was pleasure. really, it was wonderful. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, you guys. Thank you. I wish that this was longer. I know. Uh, I'm sorry, Presley. <laughs> Presley, you'll just have to take improv when you when you you're probably going to be old enough pretty soon. And do we have another meeting soon? Well, or... you know what? We're we're gonna we're gonna try to bribe Tracy to do another session. Okay. I'd love. All right. To. <laughs> and you can bring all your friends, Presley. Bring yeah. your friends. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.